Welcome to my pencast in accounting 2310. Our topic today is out of um, the current books, chapter 5 on income measurement. My goal today is to provide an overview of the different income measurement techniques that we'll study in the next few days. One of the things you'll hear me say time and time again is when to recognize revenue. Well, what is recognition? What do I mean by that? Let's get that out of the way right up front. To have recognition means it actually gets recorded into the general journal, the general ledger, and on the financial statements. So it means it's actually journalized and revenue recognition <laughs> It's taking place. Hold on. That was my cute dog. So recogni recognition means it's actually journalized and showing up on the financial statements. When do you recognize revenue? Well, in accounting 1110, we learned that you recognize this revenue according to the realization principle. In the realization principle, we said you recognize revenue when the earnings process is complete. We're going to add to that a little bit. I'm going to say, one, you're right, it is when the earnings process is complete and all major things that need to have taken place have taken place. So the earnings process is complete. But there's another caveat, and that caveat is number two, when you're reasonably certain of collection and that there are no outstanding uncertainties. If I were to bill one of you for a million dollars, it would probably not be reasonable for me to make a journal entry to record revenue because I don't think I have any certainty of collection at all. I'm going to extend this beyond what the author says to say reasonably certain of collection and there are no uncertain costs remaining. When these two characteristics work together and are both are in place, at that point, we can have revenue recognition. Let's put a little graph up here. Usually, revenue recognition takes place at the point of sale, and that's what you learned in your previous accounting classes. Someone comes in, they buy something, at that point, they pay for it or get, you get an accounts receivable. That's the point of sell. Or maybe you send them a bill and debit accounts receivable and you're not paid. That usually is, in the past, been at delivery. Well, in intermediate accounting, we're going to learn the exceptions to that. Admittedly, most transactions are recorded at point of sell. But we're going to learn some other points. So we're learning kind of the exceptions to the general rule in this chapter. Sometimes we recognize revenue before the point of delivery. And when we do that in this study, we'll be looking at the percentage of completion, revenue recognition, percentage of completion. So you recognize revenue along the way. That's somewhat to say it happens prior to delivery and that not any one thing that happens before delivery is more important than anything else. And so you learn, earn the revenue all through the period. So percentage of completion is uh, one method of revenue recognition that takes place prior to point of delivery. There are some methods that also take place after point of delivery. One is called the installment method. And it's another measurement technique usually used with long-term revenue collections. And then another one is cost recovery. Generally, when you wait till after the point of delivery and you're picking it after, there is uncertainty as to when the earnings process is complete or there's uncertainty with regards to collection or uncertain expenses. Well, I should finish that sentence, huh? So, one of the two techniques for revenue recognition is breaking down. I'd like to point out that it's not a free choice. You can't just pick one of these four methods. You must use 
the method that generally accepted accounting principles gap requires in any given circumstance. What usually messes us up is, again, uncertainties. So sometimes revenue is recognized before delivery. This is usually tied to construction contracts or projects that you build from service industries for several pieces. And you earn it all along the way. Sometimes revenue recognition happens right at delivery, and we call that point of sale delivery. And sometimes it happens after delivery, and we'll learn two techniques for that. Another thing we'll discuss during our studies is um, right of return issues. I'll just mention that. What I'd like you to notice as we progress through this discussion, in all cases, it is not the revenue that we're deferring recognition of, it's the gross profit. So in all cases of the examples to come, you'll note that it's gross profit that's deferred. Let's move on to the next pencast, and you can join me in a quick discussion and review of the point-to-sell methods. Talk to you then.